Welcome back to the Player Academy Mode series, guys. In the last episode, Arsenal sold Gabriel Jesus, our main striker, with just a few hours left of the transfer window. And I cannot believe it because, you know, why would you do that, especially when they do not have the best backup in the world in that position? But Mikel Arteta, who just won the Manager of the Month award as well, did indeed call me to clarify the situation afterwards because. Obviously, it's a bit of a weird uh, decision, and what he told me is that he actually sees me as the new striker of Arsenal. So we are back as a striker, guys. We're up to an 85 rating yet again, and uh, you guys also told me in the comment section that you should be playing striker of this team. Imagine having Martinelli on the left wing. Of course, we do not want to get in the way of Martinelli as well, um, because he is turning into his prime right now. As it stands, guys, we are number 6 in the top scores list in the Premier League when we haven't even played a full 90 minutes. And looking at this list, I cannot even see Erling Haaland. Obviously, he is still at Man City, but uh, maybe he's uh, had a bad, bad start. Maybe he's been injured. I'm not too sure, guys, but I'm sure we'll see Haaland there eventually. You might also look at my character and notice something else, and that is that I've removed my tattoo on my left arm, simply because I got a lot of hate for that tattoo, and to be honest, I didn't really like it myself either. So I went through some laser surgery to have that removed, uh, but I still have the one on my right, which I think I will keep, and obviously one on my leg as well. But let's get into the next match, guys. We're obviously going to be coming off the bench yet again. The score is 1-1 away to United, so let's get to Old Trafford and see if we can make an impact. There we go already, first touches on the ball. And we, is that Trent Alexander-Arnold I'm seeing? What? That has got to be one of the most controversial transfers in football history. Trent Alexander-Arnold from Liverpool to United. You can, just cannot do that. Come on, Saka. Why did he not shoot it there earlier? There we go. Ödegård does a good job. Saka now over to Sander. Let's see what we can do. We'll find Ödegård. No, David in the middle. Over to Davis. Oh, this is such a good attack from Arsenal. And Weiss. Oh, that is a good move from Manchester United. And Mason Mount has indeed made it 2-1. They completely outplay us there. And yeah, guys, now we're just a little bit over 10 minutes left. Are we actually going to get our first Premier League loss of the season? I hope not, but Arsenal isn't looking their best right now. Come on, Sander, let's see if we can do anything. We'll play it to Declan Rice. Okay, this is promising. Rice, can he get it back in? We are there, but Onoma with one of the best saves of the season. Oh my god, Timber, Sander, and there we go, we've done it! And as I said, guys, look at how slow Maguire was right there. I had a good feeling that we could do some damage against this exhausted defense. And while this time, I mean, Omama makes an incredible save first. But, you know, second time, uh, we do indeed score it. And uh, we have also responded pretty straight after United get the lead. So, uh, what a game this is. Proper Premier League match yet again. There were so many matches that I almost gave me a heart attack in the last episode. United have taken the lead again. No way. How did that even go in? Ramsdale beaten at the near post. Nah. There we go, Davis. Come on, Arsenal. D could we actually get another one? Surely we're quicker than Maguire. We've absolutely ran past him. We play it into Saka. Come on. No. I think that was the wrong decision, guys. I should have just done it myself there. Okay, just a few minutes left now. We are in the 89th minute. This might be the last attack for Arsenal, but we've given the ball away. And it looks like we might get our first loss of the season, which is so frustrating. It's too late. The referee is gonna blow the whistle at any moment. And it's confirmed, guys. We lose our first match of the season. We complete two of the objectives, but, you know, we do not get the victory, which is the most important thing here. So I'm super, super disappointed about that. A, a big defeat right there. 
Um, so tell the media that you gave everything and the team tactics were the problem. I'm not gonna say that guys, even though we have to get the Maverick points up, make a promise to the fans that will come back stronger next time. That is absolutely true guys. And uh, during this international break, you know, some people might say this is wrong, especially the Norwegian supporters. But I have to make an announcement, and that is that I'm not going to be playing these two friendly matches. Because obviously I've been injured now for six months, and what I want to do during this uh, little break is uh, get settled in London. I still haven't bought a place, so there we go, we now have an apartment. And um, obviously guys, at the end of the last episode we almost got injured, or we actually did get injured again. Uh, but it wasn't anything serious, so I do not want to play like a lot of minutes here in two pretty pointless matches It's just friendlies. So um, yeah guys, I've, I've decided not to join up with Norway for these two games But hopefully they can still uh, do the job though uh, They do uh, get a draw against Ireland and a loss against Ghana So not the best results for Norway there, but we will indeed be back uh, but up next guys, you know, we have the Premier League and let's take a quick look at the table because after that loss Spurs is first United is second uh, Arsenal third Leicester and then City. I mean Liverpool guys. Wow, what a bad start they are heavy, uh, having I think they really have dropped off over the last few years So that is a little bit sad to see as a Liverpool a supporter But I cannot really be thinking about that right now guys. I have to focus on Arsenal Let's have another great training session and up next of course we do indeed have Bournemouth and uh, we get subbed in after 60 minutes here at striker our new position and surely we're gonna get all the three points today let's see if we can get the perfect start to this match with a corner goal and that is absolutely beautiful the first touch and it is Martin Ødegård to Sander it's the Norwegian connection guys one of the main reasons we wanted to join Arsenal is because you know we, we know how to play with Ødegård we have done it on the national team and you know we are both Norwegian so there is no better chemistry possible and look at that guys you know another header you know we obviously did grew by one centimeter in the summer and we've seen that this season it's actually helped us a lot so far Play that up to Martinelli. Oh, Martinelli has done really good, but he cannot find Saka. Kimmich though wins the ball back, but uh, Bournemouth takes control of it. I mean, as I said before, when we get uh, more playing time together, when I can start matches, this front four of Ødegård, you know, Saka on the right, Martinelli on the left, Sander in the middle, I think, you know, we, we, we have potential to win everything this season. Just see if we have the mentality to do it. We definitely have the ability though. Look at Sokka with that pass. And I really did aim there to the left side. But the shot really wasn't uh, that good in the end. Bournemouth with a chance. But uh, it, uh, it's a good save from our keeper. It's not even Ramsdale starting this game. Maybe he's getting saved for the next one. Which is going to be the first UCL game of the season. But here comes the Harvey Elliott. Bournemouth is not done. And he has indeed been beaten, guys, at the near post. And Bournemouth has got one back. I mean, we don't want to give them any hope here at the end now. This is the Premier League, so I feel like, you know, this game is still not over completely. Here's Bournemouth yet again. Another cross and big save this time, though, from the keeper. What is going on? Come on, Davis. What a ball that is over to Sander, though. And now we can cook. We can absolutely cook everyone here and get our next goal. And that is surely going to be enough, guys, to win the game. And let's do the celebration as well. Get in there. Bournemouth with the last attack of the game, maybe. Oh, he's done really well there to get past. Come on, Ødegård. Oh, okay, yes, he does win it. Come on, do we have one last run? Can we get past him? Oh, no, we cannot. He defends it really well there, but Arsenal 4-1 result in the end and we get two goals in those 30 minutes that we feature guys So I think that next time we play in the Premier League, we are probably gonna be starting uh, Finally back, you know from from start, you know after this six months being injured It's I understand that I cannot play 90 minutes yet because obviously 
Uh, you never know, you can pick up another injury like we saw in the last episode. I literally got injured again, but I was lucky not to really get like uh, any more days out. So I understand I have to play a few minutes here and there to get into the team. Obviously, it's a brand new team as well. Um, but now I'm ready to really start matches again. Uh, so let's take a look at our groups then. Real Betis, FC Porto and Besiktas. Okay, you know what? That is not the worst group in the world. I will take that. The first one is going to be against Porto, which is uh, probably one of the toughest opponents in this group. So... Yeah, guys, I think we've got a good chance there to make it into the knockouts. We're getting subbed in with Saka in the 56 minutes. We are up 1-0 thanks to a goal from Gabriel Martinelli. So uh, we are just 30 minutes away, guys, from three very important points to start our UCL campaign. And what we have to remember, guys, this is the only trophy that Arsenal has not won. So if we can go all the way and win this trophy, obviously it would be a big dream for me. But for the Arsenal supporters, I mean, this team, we will be remembered forever, guys. You know, imagine being on the first team that wins the UCL. I mean, that is some legendary stuff right there. Porto on the attack, but the shot gets blocked straight into Timber. And here we go, David, over to Sander. That is such a good pass. Perfect. And they've gone past one. We give it. No, I meant to give it to Ödegård, but the pass was very inaccurate. Unfortunately, guys, that could have been the 2-0 and, you know, game over here. But Porto are still in this match. Here they come, down the right wing. Taliska and uh, Timber has done such a good job today. I haven't, though. I absolutely haven't. And Ram still saves my ass right there. Ramsdale and wow Porto gets so close to their goal which uh, is not good at all but here we go Arsenal on the counter we lose the ball unfortunately guys it is Porto who is looking like the team to maybe get the next goal I have a feeling there's going to be more goals here and I cannot seem to do anything in this match so far come on there we go helping out defensively and now now we have Lots of space in behind. Let's take a long touch. Do we have any options? Yes, I see Martinelli and... Oh, what a save from the goalie, guys. And Porto is on the attack. I mean, what is this match? This is even more crazy than the recent Premier League matches. And I didn't even think that was possible. It is so end-to-end -end here. Taliska. Is he going to whip it in? But Guardiola is there. Come on boys, Martinelli, David, and here we go again, take the long touch, and do I have any options, or maybe this time I'll do it myself, and there we go, and we have confirmed to get three points, and we have our first goal in this UCL campaign, obviously last season we did get so many goals, but we got knocked out in the round of 16, so... I don't know how many we could have got, but I think our Arsenal will reach further than that. So, uh, Ronaldo, I want to beat your Champions League record, bro. What a ball that was from Martinelli. Can we get past this guy? We've done insane. Finish that, and what a goal. We have two guys, and that was unbelievable for Martinelli. Look at the celebrations as well. I mean, the chemistry, I can already feel it in the team. I really, really think we made the right decision going to Arsenal, guys. This team is like a family. And what a finish. A proper striker's goal. Last thing that's gonna happen in this game is this Porto free kick. Are we gonna keep a clean sheet or does Taliska score? He doesn't. A clean sheet for Ramsdale and Arsenal. And we do indeed get those two goals. And uh, I really have a special feeling about this Arsenal team guys I feel like we can reach far this season in this competition and there we have some of the other results as well it's nice to see Bode Glimt there you know a fellow Norwegian team um, you know I hope they do well I hope we can face them at some point that would be so nice uh, but we are still a substitute we are not ready to be back in the starting 11 just yet but I think maybe after this Brighton game we have a big chance to uh, to start and as we can see though Brighton have started terrible Maybe they're not the same team as they used to be a few seasons ago. We're getting subbed in with Bukayo Saka after about 60 minutes, guys. And even though Brighton aren't doing the best 
Uh, we actually still have not scored a goal in this match. So uh, we've got 30 minutes to look for one. And Sander jumps up so high. But this time the crossbar denies us. Oh, Brighton, what a ball. And Alfonso Davis with a huge block. What a defender he's been. And Martinelli finds Sander, but I gotta beat the ball there. Why am I just waiting for it? This is the Premier League, you know, you don't have as much time as you, you have in the Bundesliga or the Eredivisie. You have to remember that. Let's try to give it to David, and that is a good run from David. Can he give it back? Yes, he can! And we finish in the top corner! What a nice goal from Arsenal. Maybe a little bit lucky, but we take it and we celebrate with the fans. That would have been one of my best solo runs, that is for sure. Is Brighton going to be able to get one more chance here? Or are they not going to have enough time? There we go. The time is up and uh, we get the match winning goal at a difficult game. And that was only the, one of the only few chances we actually had. United win their game, but Spurs have indeed lost, guys. I mean, that is huge news. Because, uh, you know, they were unbeaten, they had won everything so far, so I'm happy to see that. Uh, of course, uh, Carbo Cup up next, this is another competition that we're going to be in this season. Round 3 now against Sheffield United, so we will get into this one to see if, uh, you know, we can do some damage here as well in this competition. We're up 1-0 though, which is very good in the 56 minutes. Let's see if we can get our first goal in this brand new competition. This is very exciting. Oh my god, we have absolutely timed that so perfectly. Come on, can we beat the defender? We've done good, and we give it to Martinelli, who does indeed lose the ball, unfortunately. But as we can see, Sheffield United does indeed have a red card as well, so they're playing with 10 men, and we can see that pretty clearly with these mistakes. Sander looks for the opening, but it is out for a corner kick. I don't think we'll have any trouble though guys winning this match, especially when they have one player sent off as well. What just happened? <laughs> I thought he died there for a second. Come on, what an attack this is, but the final ball from Martinelli is not precise. That's a good ball, and we look for Martinelli, who yet again guys doesn't seem like the best header in the world. Davis with a huge block. Oh my god. I mean, imagine if Sheffield United got, uh, got a goal, even with 10 men. That would be pretty embarrassing, I have to say. It's not gonna let that happen, though. Get it out of there, Guardiol. David, and here we go, guys. We have so much space. Are we gonna be able to finish this game? Let's see if we have any options in the box, and we cannot find them. There we go, surely, there we have the winner, and it is, no, it is offside. That would have been such a good goal if it counted, guys. I mean, that volley was beautiful on my left as well, but as we can see, it is actually a pretty big offside, so uh, nothing to complain about there. It's still not over, though. This is the English Cup as well, miracles do happen here, you know, and... No, it's not gonna happen today. Come on, Arsenal. Let's counter in this last goal and just end this game. Sander over to Davis. I mean, David, come on. No, he passes it. Why would you pass it there? Not only do you rob me of an assist, but you're a striker, bro. This is why Arteta wants me to be striker for this team when we are back because. I would have never passed the ball in that situation. Let's see if there's been any crazy results, guys. Any big upsets or something. Looking at the objectives, it seems like we are ready to start matches again. Which, um, you know, I cannot wait for. You know, we're getting 90 minutes to play. In the next round, we're actually going to be playing against Chelsea. That is a big match. 
in the fourth round. United are through, Newcastle have gone out, Leeds have gone out, City obviously knock out Liverpool there. Of course, the, the main teams are through. Uh, the main Premier League teams are, are going to make it into the next round. But now we have a big match in the league, guys, against Chelsea. As we can see from the table, uh, we are second, one point behind United. Uh, they are actually the only team that have still not lost a game this season. Uh, but now let's have a wonderful training session here before this big derby. And I think we are going to... Get to know that we are gonna start the match. My first That's 90 minutes of football, hopefully, since we obviously yeah, got this up, massive injury, guys. <laughs> and it just feels great to be back. This is our comeback season. And I'm excited to see what we can do in these 90 minutes now. Of course, this is what Arteta told me about. David is not gonna be starting matches now that we are fully back. We are going to be a striker, we're going to have Martinelli on the left, we're going to be having Sokka on the right, we're going to have Ödegård behind. I mean, when we, as I said before, get our chemistry even better, this front four, guys, is absolutely insane. So let's get into this one against Chelsea and see if we can get ourselves a win in this derby. Chelsea with the first attack of the match, Enzo Fernandez. Shot gets blocked, uh, but we cannot really seem to clear the ball. Mudrik causing a bit of problem. Enzo Fernandez. But well, Gabriel gets it in the end, and now Arsenal can attack. Pretty intense start to this match, I'm not gonna lie. I think there's gonna be many goals today. Sander past one, still going here, and the drop with an incredible save. There we go, Ödegård, that's incredible work. We give it to Martinelli, but it is offside. Are you kidding me? I mean, that could not have been by a lot. But um, I guess the, we have to trust VAR in these moments. Come on, guys. It would be huge to get the first goal. But look at the way Chelsea are playing out from the back here. Nicolas Jackson now and Kunku on the ball. Running through on goal. And he does score the first one of the game. Chelsea take the lead at the Emirates. Now we've just got to try to get a goal as quickly as possible. And we cannot let Chelsea get another one here. Because a loss is, um, is bad in the title race. Come on, past one, past two, and referee. He just went flying in two-footed. Give him at least a yellow. I don't think it actually was Enzo Fernandez. It was somebody else, but he's just getting a talking to. I mean, you, you can just feel... The, the derby vibes, guys, of this game. Ludwig is causing so much problems. Down the wing, very quick player. Now he plays it into Nkunku. Chelsea are cooking right now, I'm not gonna lie. Obviously, that is one of the teams that also wanted to sign me. But uh, we did indeed reject them and join Arsenal instead. And uh, I hope we made the correct choice, guys. But uh, this, this Chelsea team is looking strong. Um, not going to say anything about that. Come on, Kimmich. Saka. This is better. This is much better now. Saka again over to Sander. That is a good pass. We head it down and take it on the volley. But Trap denies us again. Not long left until halftime either. Furlan Mendy. Exploiting the space. Whips it in, and Martinelli heads it out. Ödegård, what a touch that is. Nice ankle breaker. Can he find me in the middle? What a ball from Ödegård. Can we take it past the defender? And finish it, and there we go, guys. Finally, we have the goal we've been looking for this off. It's a nice assist from Ödegård. The Norwegian connection again. And that is so important to get this goal right before half time, guys. Wow, that is much better now. What an intense half of football it's been, guys. It's another Premier League classic, it feels like. Uh, and now, are Chelsea gonna get one more chance before half time? Or, referee, look at the clock. Look at the clock, ref. What's going on? Maybe he's adding a little bit more because we scored. Oh no, okay, there we go guys, that is going to be the end of the first 45, and this game is far from over, I uh, have a feeling there's going to be more goals. What a ball that is, 
Enzo Fernandez. What is he gonna do? Did I just run into early goal or did it fall over? Oh my god, what is going on? And Kunkim again! But Ramsdale with a huge save. And the Arsenal supporters right now are a little bit nervous because Chelsea have started the second half the best team as they did in the first. Are they gonna get a goal? And they do end up scoring. Uh, it is so predictable as well, you know. Chelsea with the possession now over to Gallagher and guys this is looking bad unless we can steal a pointer at the end and Saka I mean, looks for us but we don't really have the stamina left come on guys pressure anything can we get one more attack please no that is gonna be it Chelsea are gonna get the victory and Looks like he might get another goal. Jackson going all the way into Sterling. And that is game over. Fair play to Chelsea, man. They have destroyed us today. This could mean a lot in the title race, guys. Because that means we've lost two matches already this season. And um, if uh, United have won their game, they're just going even further uh, in the table right now. So, you know, even though I get the goal, I feel like I didn't play that by myself. But it's it's most important that the team gets the victories. Nice to see though that Erdegaard is the assist leader. Five assists in seven matches. But uh, you know, that's, that's not going to give us three points in every game. We need to be better as a team. The bad news is not done because Erling Haaland has won the Ballon d'Or. I feel like, you know, we, uh, we, we should have been there ourselves, you know, with all of the goals we scored. Maybe if I didn't get injured, maybe if I didn't get injured, guys, we could have been there ourselves. But no, it is Erling Haaland who takes it home yet again. This is just giving me more motivation, guys, to win it next year. But uh, the Norwegian is, is dominating right now. Hopefully next year we'll see a different Norwegian. But... Um, Wow, guys, it's going to be so difficult to beat him off this trophy. The next game is going to be in the Champions League where, uh, you know, we are doing a little bit better. Um, so I cannot wait for that. But uh, yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching this episode. Really hope you enjoyed it. If you want another one tomorrow, smash the likes and subscribe. Thank you so much for the support, guys. And I'll see you very soon with episode 31. Peace out.